your calculus teacher or professor lied to you. And in this video, I'm going to explain why with this definite integral, 1 over x dx is log absolute value x plus a constant. Why is this false? Well, first of all, let's try to figure out why it's true, which may seem counterintuitive, but what's the reasoning behind this? So when people give the integral 1 over x dx, we want to find the antiderivative of 1 over x. What function differentiates to be 1 over x? Now the first bet is to just take the function f of x is equal to the log of x. And in that case, we know that the f prime of x is going to equal to 1 over x. However, the issue is that the log of x is not defined for negative values of x. So that's why we put the absolute value. But why does that work? What does that do really? Well, let's find out. If x is negative, then what you can do is, when you take log of the absolute value of x, you know that is just log of minus x, which makes sense because x is negative, so minus x is positive, hence in the domain of log. Now if I try to differentiate that, I can use the chain rule because minus x, x to minus x is a function on negative values to positive values. And now if I differentiate this, if I take g of x is equal to log of minus x, then g prime of x is going to equal to 1 over minus x times the derivative of minus x, which is negative 1, which is minus 1. And so therefore, we just get 1 over x. And for x negative, it gives back just 1 over x, which is what we want. Okay, So in that, in that sense, we can define this function log of absolute value x, and its, anti -der its derivative is going to be 1 over x. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is log of the absolute value x. So what's wrong so far? So at any stage, if you think there's a mistake, Think about it and drop a comment down below. So far, so good. But of course, we have to add the constant, right? Whenever we take an integral, we have to take the plus a constant. So why is that? Well, if you add a constant and you differentiate the function log of absolute value x, you'll just get the derivative of log of absolute value x because the derivative of a constant is 0. Now, I'm going to blow your mind right now. And I want you to hit that like button if so far you think there isn't a mistake. Because I'm going to show you something cool. And by liking my video, you're going to sh disseminate this to everyone who thinks this is true, because it is not true. I'm going to give you a function whose derivative is 1 over x that is not log absolute value x plus constant. Let's do that. So that's what I'm going to do now. And so are you ready for it? What's the function going to be? We're going to use f of x. I'm going to write it down. So f of x is going to equal to the following function. What do you think it's going to be? Drop a comment down below if you know. I'm going to share it. It's going to be the following. It's going to be piecewise defined, which may give you a clue. It's going to be log x, log absolute value x plus 1 if x is positive. And it's going to be the log of absolute value of x minus 1 if x is negative. This function is not log absolute value x plus a constant. However, its derivative is equal to 1 over x. Because for each piece separately, we do the same thing we just did to see that f prime of x is equal to 1 over x. So what's going on here? Why did I construct this function? How does it come to be? Well, I guess the trick is we don't even have to say 1 and minus 1. There was nothing special about those. We could have replaced them with c1 and c2, any constant c1 and c2 that need not necessarily equal to each other. And this function differentiates to be 1 over x. And this is the general form of the antiderivative of 1 over x. It's going to be this kind of function, which is piecewise defined. And how do you actually prove it? Where do things go wrong? Well, what we can do is we can explain it as follows. If you have a function, if you find its antiderivative, why do we add a constant? Well, the reason is that if two functions are an antiderivative for the same thing, OK? So for example, suppose that g prime of x is equal to 1 over x. And suppose that h prime of x is equal to 1 over x. In that case, if I define a function k of x is equal to g of x minus h of x, then k prime of x is going to equal to g prime of x minus h prime of x, which because both of those are equal to 1 over x, they're both antiderivatives of the same function, that's going to imply k prime of x is 0. And now we have a function k of x whose derivative is 0. And then we conclude that's a constant which would imply that the difference between g and h is a constant, which is why we put the plus constant in integration. The issue here is that the function k of x, because the original function 1 over x is not defined for all numbers, it is a piecewise defined function. 1 over x is defined only for x non-zero. 
you have negative values of x and positive values of x, a function whose derivative is zero on all non-zero numbers need not be a constant. It is a constant for negative values and a constant for positive values. They need not be the same constant. The general picture of such a function looks like this. It looks like you draw the graph here, you put some constant c1 and say, for example, and some constant, another constant doesn't matter, c2. This is, a, there is a hole at zero, so it's defined for x non-zero. Its derivative is zero, but it's not a constant. So that's the explanation for why this is the general form of the antiderivative of one over x. Now, this is something that is often a misconception. It's often written wrongly in calculus classes, books, etc. The antiderivative is written like this. So why isn't this more of a big deal? If you haven't heard of it before, why haven't you heard of it before? Well, the main reason is that most of the applications for integration are to definite integrals. And in definite integrals, you do not need to worry about the plus constant. So all of this stuff isn't that important. But when you're doing indefinite integrals, this matters. But people either can't be bothered to go through this and try to write it out in this way, or they aren't aware of it. So spread the word, remember to like, and subscribe to my channel for lots more content. I've got a lot of videos now, almost 100 videos, and I'm very interested in creating free accessible math education. Now, if you're interested in more stuff like this, check out the video here. It's going to pop up here. It's going to be a video with a very similar trick, proving pi is 0 using calculus. You're going to learn a beautiful trig identity when you watch that video. So I'm going to see you over there. I wish you all the best. See you in that video.